My name is Hannah and this is my no buy year. Welcome to another video in my declutter series. I will have my declutter playlist linked down below in case you'd like to click through and catch up on all of the things that I've decluttered up until now. I am undertaking this series because I feel like my makeup collection is slightly overstuffed. I don't have a goal number of products in each category, I just want to weed out the things that I don't absolutely love, the things that I'm not prepared to eventually use up. In some categories I'll declutter a lot, and in others, barely anything. My collection is already fairly edited, and I did do a big general declutter earlier this year, so I don't expect this series to be particularly savage, just an honest attempt to distill what I have. I'll be separating my products into four categories. Category one is for the products that I cherish and want to keep. So that's the category for the no-brainers, the ones that as soon as I pick them up, I just feel like shouting, I love you. Category two will be products that I don't exactly cherish, but I like them enough to want to pan them instead of getting rid of them. Category three is for the things that I don't like enough to pan, and those are things that I will be decluttering. And category four is for things that have gone bad or become unusable in some way, and those are things that I'll be throwing away. Unless something is unsafe to wear or unsafe to share for sanitary reasons, I will be giving all of my decluttered products away to friends, family, and women's shelters. Today I'm going to be decluttering my lip glosses. So I'm going to show you the current state of my lip gloss collection, where it is stored and what the storage looks like, and then I'll show you what that storage looks like after the declutter. So most of my lip glosses and balms are in this little drawer right here. It doesn't really feel overstuffed right now, but I do think that I have a few more than I need. So some of them are in here. There are two up here that are too big to fit in this drawer. At least I think they are. Actually, they're not too big to fit in that drawer. <laughs> they were just up there because I used to have lipsticks in this drawer. So this drawer used to be over full and these were too big to fit in the over full drawer. So it may be that after the declutter, they will fit in there. But up until now, these two big glosses have been living up here. I also have a lip scrub and a lip balm right here. And then I have this lip balm that I usually keep by my bedside table. Uh, I just wanted to be thorough. So I'm gonna take all of these into the other room and and start the declutter. These are all of my balms and glosses. I'm gonna start by separating out the lip glosses from the lip balms, because I'm gonna do them in two separate phases. Okay, here are all of my lip glosses. As always, I'm going to start by pulling out the ones that spark the most joy, the ones that are my true, true loves. The first one that springs immediately to hand is the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm. I really, really love this as kind of a luscious, over-the-top, everyday, huge doe foot gloss that smells and tastes good that I can just layer and layer and layer. I've been known to sometimes apply this while I'm walking to work. I can just walk down the street and apply it. I love the way it makes my lips look. I've used three quarters of it. I'm definitely gonna pan this at some point, probably in the not too distant future. But for the time being, it goes in category one. It is a no brainer, I truly love it. And you know, I think that might be it for category one for glosses. There are some glosses here that I really love and that I'm looking forward to using until I use them up. But I feel like this is the only one that I'm truly gonna miss when it's gone and the only one that I would consider repurchasing at this point. So I'm just gonna move forward with the rest of the glosses and see which category each one falls into. Starting with this, this is ColourPop Fairy Floss. I shopped my stash for this earlier in the year and I will link that Shop My Stash video so you can see how I felt about this. It's my most concealer lips gloss and I was a little bit worried that it would look weird on me. After I shopped my stash for it and wore it for a while, I determined that it didn't look that weird on me. It actually looks kind of good in certain situations with certain looks, but 
I just don't love it. I just don't love kind of the semi-opaque gloss that's much, much lighter than the color of my lips. I always feel like my lip color is peeking through and that it's settling into the lip lines. And I just have stopped reaching for this ever. I definitely don't feel like it sparks joy. I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. So that goes into category three. This one, however, this is the other ColourPop gloss. It's called Saddle Up. I've been hearing more and more lately about how quickly ColourPop glosses and liquid lipsticks go bad. So I'm gonna try with all my might to use this product up. I think that there's about a third of it left, really. When I use it, I, I pile it on. It's pretty, it's a very bright orangey coral gloss. And when I put it on, it's sheer, but it's pigmented enough to show its color on my lips. And I could see myself making really good headway on this. It's going in category two. The Glossier Lip Gloss. Uh, this is a pretty easy category two. I don't love it, but I don't hate it enough to declutter it. I think it would probably be in my best interest to use this up to go ahead and pan it. So I'm gonna put that in category two. This could probably have been in my lipstick declutter. I don't know how it snuck into the balms. I mean, it is a very, it's not a lip gloss. It's a very balmy balm. In fact, it should definitely have been in my lipstick declutter because the closest dupe that I have to this, or that I had, was that Tarte Lip Surgeon's lip stain that had gone bad. This is actually a pretty decent thing to have since I couldn't keep that one. If you haven't seen my lipstick declutter, it'll be linked or it'll be in the playlist. So you'll know what I'm talking about if you have seen that. This is, it's like a balm slash lip color. It's the Clinique Almost Lipstick in Black Cherry. I really do love this product. I actually would probably consider this to be something that sparks a lot of joy. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in category one. The Fenty is the only lip gloss that's in category one, but this sneaked in, it was in the wrong place. This is a Makeup Forever Deluxe Sample Size, the Artist Plexi Gloss and it's in kind of a light peachy color. I'm not sure what the number is. This is very pretty. It's theoretically a very pretty gloss, but it's super sticky, and the stickiness means that it stays really well on the lips. I just find myself never reaching for it. It's like I've never had a good experience wearing it, and I'm not exactly sure why, but there's a good amount of product left and I haven't used it very many times, so I feel like I can go ahead and declutter this to a friend. This is a deluxe sample size of the Too Faced Sweet Peach Creamy Lip Oil Gloss. Y'all know they smell so good, they taste so good, and I could maybe see myself acquiring a full size of this at some point in the future in a different color, maybe? But no, actually I don't, no, I wouldn't do that, especially not because I'm about to declutter this one. But this one has a bunch of problems. It's too light for me, so it looks funny on my lips. It looks like it's sitting like a film on top of my darker lip color. And it's gone in like 60 seconds. Like you put it on and then it's gone. It really, really does not hang around. And I, I like the, the smell and the taste, but I kind of don't like that I like it. it makes me think about the fact that I'm addicted to sugar and it just, it feels like kind of a weird replacement for eating candy. I just honestly don't like anything about this and I'm not particularly drawn to Too Faced as a brand. I do think that this has enough left in it though and is in good enough shape that someone else can get some good use out of it. I'm gonna go ahead and declutter that one. These are two NYX Butter Glosses, and I really, really love these. I almost put them into category number one. I thought about it, but I decided to put them in category number two because I'm interested in panning these. I think I could probably use both of these up. That's how much I love them, but I'm not entirely sure that I would run right out and replace them once I used them up. So they're not exactly holy grails. They're just really, really beautiful drugstore lip glosses that I'm gonna try to focus on using more in the coming months. So this one's in the color Tiaramisu. They're so pigmented. They're, these are more pigmented than any of the other glosses I've swatched. 
And this one is in the color Praline. I really like this. This is a really nice, rich, deep, my lips but better color for me. Sorry about all the noise outside. It's, it's a noisy Saturday afternoon in my neighborhood. This is a deluxe sample size of the Urban Decay Hi-Fi Shine Ultra Cushion Lip Gloss in the color SPL. And I love this. I love this formula. I'm definitely gonna try to pan this. I've been using it a lot though, and it's a weird color for me. Like, it's iridescent pink with like, iridescent color shifting sparkles. It's just not something that I would ever wear. I don't know if you can see that with the light coming in the way it is, but um, I'm trying to do like a really big swatch so that you can see it. It's also just hard to see because it's, it's pretty sheer. It's just the color shift. Anyway, but if you're really, really curious, you can look up some swatches online. I just love how cushiony and nourishing this gloss is, and I usually hate minty glosses, like minty plumping glosses are not my thing. This is like a minty plumping gloss, and I really, really love it. It just took me entirely by surprise. I could see myself purchasing a full size of this gloss in a more neutral color at some point in the future to be one of a very few staple glosses in my collection. I just really, really like this formula. So I'm thinking about it, I'm scoping out the color selection, and in the meantime, I'm going to pan this little baby. And then this is my one lip plumper. This is just like a really, really stingy, intense lip plumper. It's from the Sephora collection. It's the Outrageous Plump Effect lip gloss from the Sephora collection. I think that this has been discontinued, which is sad because it's a really good and inexpensive lip plumping product. I always have one good, strong lip plumper in my collection. I just put it on a lot of times when I'm getting ready, and then by the time I'm ready to apply my lip products, my lips will be nice and smooth and plump. So this is something that I'm just gonna continue to use up until I pan and then I will look for another lip plumper. So here's how I did with glosses. I'm actually going to remove this guy right now because this is really a lipstick that snuck into this video. So I have one lip gloss that I deeply love. I have these one, two, three, four, five, six that I am going to keep until I've used them up. And then I have three that I'll be decluttering. These are all my balms. And I went ahead and put this lip oil in here because it's pretty much clear and I feel like it's more of a lip treatment than a lip gloss. Although maybe it should have gone in the other category. It probably should have, I'm sorry. Anyway, this is what we're doing. I'll talk about it first. This is the YSL Tint in Huile Lip Oil and I got it in a very, very neutral, <laughs> invisible color. There's no way that you're gonna be able to see that. This is a luxurious seeming product. The tube is very, very beautiful. I think it has a bit of a cult following among some people. I find that it just is not long lasting on my lips at all. I like the feeling of putting it on, and for a long time I really loved it because I felt like it was super luxury and it was really special. And it does look really pretty when you first apply it, but I find that it is gone from my lips in a very short time. I have to reapply it constantly all day. And then, paradoxically, I feel like it dries my lips out. My lips feel dry at the end of the day when I've been using this all day. So it looks really pretty when it's on and it feels really moisturizing when it's on, but I don't think it's actually that good for my lips. However, I've been using it for a really long time. And when I use it, I use a lot. By a really long time, I mean, maybe two years, probably, ah, uh, it's probably a year and a half old. But I've been using it a lot and I have a feeling that I have a shot at panning it. So even though I'm totally out of love with it and I feel like it dries out my lips, I'm gonna put it in category two and I'm gonna try to get all of my money's worth from this product, I'm gonna try to use it. This, however, ugh, this is a Givenchy lip balm. Le Rouge Perfecto is what it's called. And it's it's like Givenchy's answer to the Chanel 
No, the Dior, you know how Dior has those Dior lip addicts that are really popular? And so it's supposed to be color changing and react with the pH of your skin. And it's supposed to be like a flattering luxury lip balm. And it's in this leather packaging and all of that stuff. I don't even remember why I bought, you know why I bought this? Because it was the last one. I tested the tester, my lips looked fine and there was only one left. It was like all sold out everywhere and there was only one and I was like, I'm so lucky that I got the last one and so I bought it. And I just don't like how it makes my lips look. It makes them bright, bright pink. And every time I reach for it, because I think that I have a look on that needs sort of like a sheer neutral balmy lip product. I put this on, it turns my lips bright pink, I look terrible, and I scrub it off and put on something else. So I did get some use out of this product. Yeah, there's still a good bit left, and I think that I can probably kind of shave off the top bit of this and pass it along to a friend who will enjoy the rest of it. This is the Bite Agave Lip Mask. This is a fantastic product. I absolutely love it. And it's pretty well most of the way used up. I would say there's a fifth of the product left in here. Um, I am absolutely gonna pan this. I think that in terms of holy grails, this has been usurped by this. This is like my true love, so that that's the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. We'll talk about that in a second. But I definitely would repurchase that over this. However, I do love this still. It's going in category two. I'm gonna use it up. This is a By Terry Balm de Rose Deluxe Sample Size. This is apparently a very famous lip product, lip balm, and it's really, really expensive to buy the full size. I don't like this because when I use it as an overnight lip balm, when I wake up, it tastes like dirt on my mouth. And so it's kind of gross to me. I definitely wouldn't buy it, but there's only a little bit left in this little deluxe sample pot. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make an effort to use the rest of this up. Actually, after this declutter, I'm gonna use this every day until it's used up and then I'll move on to using the other two that I really love. And then this right here is my only lip scrub. It's a Hen Organics Rose Diamond Lip Exfoliator. And it's nice to have a lip scrub. I probably use it about once a week. I use it when I really need it, but I'm not going through it that fast. It's nice. Definitely keeping it. I, I would like to use this until it's gone. I said I would get back to talking about this, the original Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. It feels amazing. It does amazing things for my lips overnight, and I also often reach for it during the day because it has a beautiful, shiny, milky finish on the lips. I have used about half of this. It's a huge pot for a lip balm type product, and I'm gonna eventually pan this. I'm sure I am, but I'm putting it in category one because that's how much I love it. One lip balm that I love, 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 four lip care products that I am going to pan, and then one that I will be decluttering. So here's how I did with my glasses and balms. I have two that I love, 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 and in the far future, I could see myself just having this as a balm and then having this as a gloss with maybe one other gloss that I really, really love. I just don't need that much of a variety of lip glosses. Maybe I'll get one of those Urban Decay ones to be the partner to this. Maybe I'll get the other color of the Fenty to be the par partner to this. But I feel like as time goes on, I will eventually distill my lip gloss and balm collection down to just a couple of products. But in the meantime, I'm gonna pan all of these guys, get, the, get them good and used up, get my money's worth, and then I'm going to be decluttering these four. 
Usually at this point in the declutter, I take another look at the things that I've decided to keep and I try to see if there's anything that I can let go of even though it made it through the first round. But with these products, I feel like I use gloss at a rate that I feel like I can actually pan all of these things. Unlike with the lipsticks, I feel like I actually have a shot at whittling this down to two or three products by actually using up all of the stuff. So I don't feel like I need to remove any of these. I don't feel like this is too much. I don't feel like I kept too much. I feel like I can actually use all of this stuff up. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with these as the products I'm keeping. I'm keeping, I'm keeping 12 lip gloss and lip balm products and I am decluttering four. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these back in their storage and then I will show you what that looks like. I am pleased to report that all of my glosses and balms now fit in this little drawer. There they are. So these four things used to be up here taking up space and now they're fitting in here. And I put my favorite one and this, which I reach for for utilitarian reasons on this side. And then the ones that I'm trying to pan, I put over here. So I'm gonna try to focus on this side of the gloss drawer when I open this drawer for the next couple of months until some of these are completely knocked out. If this balm doesn't fit in there, it's too tall, but I usually keep this either by my bedside table or actually with my nighttime skincare. Like I keep it together with my night sleeping cream because I always just apply them at the same time. So this kind of tends to float around between my purse, my bedside table, and my skincare. I'm gonna let the skincare part of my vanity be its home from now on. Okay, I just tried to open and close this drawer a couple of times and every time I opened it, the height of this pulled this drawer out with it. It's like it fits in there, but it's just tall enough that it makes a problem. So I'm gonna pop this back up here on the top of there. I don't feel like it's an eyesore there. It doesn't really take up room. I think it's it's perfectly fine. So that is it. That's how I'm gonna leave things. I'm really pleased with how much space I have freed up, and I'm looking forward to freeing up even more space among my lip glosses. If I can eventually get my lip gloss collection down to just two or three glosses, then they would fit up here with my lipsticks and I wouldn't need to use this drawer for lip products anymore at all. Now that I've decluttered both my lipsticks and my lip glosses, I feel like it's a lot easier for me to see the things I love and to see the things that I'm trying to use up. Just in general, everything in this part of my vanity has a lot more room to breathe. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll remember to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.